So, here we are. We finally have the trailer for year two of Mortal Kombat Combat with the story mode Chaos Reigns, apparently. The trailer dropped at San Diego Comic-Con yesterday. I have not had a chance to see it yet because I wanted to do a reaction video. And the problem with that is, of course, uh, it was like 10 o'clock at night when it dropped. So I wasn't able to do that last night. So now I can. And it's like half seven in the morning. So I'm sorry if my voice is... You know, not up to snuff because it's, it's not very good in the morning, you know what I'm saying? But we're going to watch this four minute trailer. Unfortunately, I've been spoiled on two thirds of the combat pack. I, I always have uh, Twitter open as an extra tab and I will just go over to it. And so by habit, I went over to Twitter without thinking and saw one of the guests and one of the characters. And then when the trailer was uploaded by Shah, who is the which is the version I'm watching here, uh, the thumbnail just has all the characters. And two of those characters are bright colours, so I saw exactly who they were, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, this is the, the frustrating part, is there really isn't a place you can go that I'm aware of where you can just watch the trailer and not get spoiled on anything that's in it, because it's always in the thumbnail. Everyone's going to be like, <gasps> shock face! It's this character that everyone wants to see to get people to watch the, the, the video. I just want a thumbnail that doesn't spoil anything. Like, we at least have Havoc as a theme here. Just put Havoc's face from the trailer, you know? Like, come on, guys. Don't, don't be like this. I just want to watch it and not get spoiled. Unfortunately, I've been spoiled on four of the six. Four. I don't know who the other two guests are, assuming they are guests. So, hopefully, it'll be something fun. So, let's get going and see where this goes. I, I, try, I try not to pause to uh, analyze stuff too much. I might come back to it later. All right, so here's some ninjas, I I'm pretty sure. I think that's Scorpion. Uh, is that Jade? Yo, <laughs> nah, we'll see. There are no sacred laws, no divine rules. I choose what is right. I hold the- now, I, I did watch a few seconds of this trailer actually yesterday. I do like the one who actually has a deception mask right back there, so we, we should be getting that, which is good. And, and I look at this and I think all these habits like, yeah, yeah. You know what this reminds me of? And I'm sure this is where they got the idea. The shot of the Kang Dynasty, like the, scene, the end credit scene of this Kang Dynasty in Ant-Man and the Ma Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. You know, we, we all made the jokes about how um, they were kind of ripping off Infinity War and Endgame with MK11. You know, everyone's here for the big battle, that's Infinity War, and then or the finale of Endgame, perhaps, and then Endgame itself was being riffed on with the whole time heist plot. Of all things to, to take influence from, from the MCU, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was not on my bingo card. Let, I'm gonna be real. <laughs> the power, and I choose to bless all beings everywhere with anarchy. It seems that they are carrying on with the whole I'm angry, growly, uh, evil Havoc Man, which is stupid. The True Underdogs talked about this before. He talked about it a lot to us on the Combat Kings. It used to be way cool when he just talked or whispered instead of just growling angrily at everyone. This new Havoc is different from ours. Yo, 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 yo. Is that Dakota? Taconda? With his papa? I can't tell who he's fused with. Maybe he's the Scorpion Fusion. Ooh. He doesn't want freedom. He wants to burn everything down. Let real warriors handle this. Okay, Fem Sector. That voice is familiar. I don't know if that voice is. Um, I don't think it's Kelly Who. It's. I'm sure it's someone else who who just heard in a bunch of roles. But <laughs> it sounds a bit like Kelly Who to me, which would be really funny if she was playing another character. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this confirms the leaks of the female Sector and Cyrax. Will they be th this timeline's versions, or will they be from Havoc's timeline? Was, okay, so are all these Shaolin, or was one of them in... Does one of them look like a ninja? It could be uh, Shared ID as well. They, like, they could be here together. My will is unbreakable. Oh, she has an African accent. That's nice. So this needs to be probably like, probably like the, the, the second chapter of the story or something. The, um, the Cyber Link way attacking. The future is chaos. All must embrace it. Oh, so, okay, so... 
Okay, so this is one of the characters that was spoiled immediately for me, the other being one of the guests. Of course, the question of, is this, is he from Havoc's timeline? Is he like Behan from Havoc's timeline? Or is he the main Behan? Where he was, he was about to be injected with something. So it seems like they may be going the direction of Havoc transforms him into Noob Cybot and he doesn't die to become that. Which then would leave the door open for a Sub-Zero to be introduced. Any number of ways you could do that. It is interesting how they're using the Chaos Season skins here. You know, the ones from Invasions that were from Havoc's timeline. But I thought Havoc was just going to have all the fusion guys. But I guess he's going to have this stuff as well. Unless this is what has become Sub-Zero after being injected. Because this is just Chaos Sub-Zero. So either this is him from Havoc's timeline and he's fighting Noob Cybot from the main timeline or Noob Cybot is Sub-Zero from that original timeline and this is just Joker-fied kind of like, like Joker Toxin Behan. I'm curious to see what that's about. I am also a little concerned if our Behan does become Noob Cybot because, I mean, he clearly is Sub-Zero because he's still KG Tang doing the voice. I hope he doesn't sound too much like uh like the way the way they took him in mk11 because that was that was dog shit but so far it does seem to be just the same way kg tag plays behind some zero i wonder if we're going to see that stage that we saw in like a uh, quan chi was being added there was a, a screenshot of him in, in a chaos realm stage i'm curious when we'll see that you sound like behind i am he though not as you remember what did havoc do to you okay so it is me. Oh, they love the little references. They love little references to past games. I'll say this. I like the design a lot. It's better than what they did in 11. I much I love the, the Giga mask that we had in 11 that they didn't use in the story, even though it's the default design and look way better. And that's a good thing. So Onslaught, Noob Cyborg is better by default. I always felt that the, the big spiky armor was a bit much. It was way too edgy. Like it felt like, it felt like a character from Spawn, you know, it, it didn't really feel right. It was a bit too much. This is good. A good balance of some spiky armor and like normal stuff. Yeah, it really sucks that Sub-Zero immediately goes from setting up where he's going to be a, a big threat to Earthrealm, fighting the good guys and all that. And I guess he'd be like a, a major antagonist for once. And they just immediately decide, no, he's going to be Noob Cybot again. Completely subservient to Havoc. Maybe they did this as a reference to, you know, the MK9 ending for Noob Cybot where he teams up with Havoc. That may have been the inspiration. But I think it's really lame that the characters we get in are Noob Cybot sec and just female Sector and Cyrax. We already have Bihan. Do we, do we need another version of Bihan in this in this game? <laughs> They're gonna have to introduce another Sub Zero next time, unless this Bihan turns back from Noob Cybot, or it becomes like a Jekyll and Hyde thing, which I guess could be interesting, uh, especially mechanically, if you want to have him like be kind of somewhere in between the two. Although a lot of fans will not like that because they'd want the the purity of a Sub Zero and a Noob Cybot, not together. Sector and Cyrax just feel like a massive waste of time because we already have them both as cameos. Both of them are cameos, right? And of all the characters from the cameo roster you could make into playable characters, I think someone like, um, you know, Serena or Darius would have been a better pick. I mean, Darius would have been better for the chaos stuff. You know, the guy from Order Realm who is friends with his timelines Havoc. That would have been much better choice than he could have fleshed stuff out there. But no, they chose Sector and Cyrax. And this is the Havoc stuff, and all we've seen of Havoc prior to this, before he, t he started showing up with Chaos people and turning Bihan into Noob Cybot. What we saw before then was the fusion characters, the Sub-Zero and Quan Chi amalgamation, and then we saw the uh, Tanya Kitana one, and hey, we've seen the, the, I think it was Liu Kang with Kenshi, and then Takeda with probably Scorpion. So I think it would have made more sense to put Triborg in. I know a lot of people don't want Triborg in. I, I, I get it, right? But I feel like if there was any MK game to bring Triborg back, it would be this one. Again, we have Sector and Cyrax's cameos. Taking up two slots for those two just feels like a waste. And I'm sure we'll see Cyber Smoke as well somewhere. Maybe even Cyber Sub-Zero. But when the antagonist, a guy who has fusions of various characters, wouldn't Triborg be the, the perfect fit for this? It's a version of Triborg who is a literal merging of Sector, Cyrax, Sub-Zero and Smoke. And you can even do a fun thing though. Every voice line could just have like a random pair of the voice actors. So, uh, oh, uh, we, we don't have uh, Yuri Lowenthal available this week to record some dialogue. We'll, we'll just get like Kwai Liang's actor and Sektor's actor and they can like do the lines together and, and do, that's what Triborg speaks like for this. And it's this proper fucked up amalgamation. Like they're all broken down and all the parts were put together, all the souls infused into one. And I, th I think that would have been a much better pick for this 
It's also kind of funny because unless they design female versions of the classic designs, like what, what they're gonna—they can't use MK3 designs, right? For Sector and Cyrex with classic costumes, which I'm sure they'll put a pack together. Maybe, maybe there'll be a pre-order with this, like oh, pre-order for the MK3 Sector Cyrex Smoke and maybe Sub Zero costume pack. Yeah, I, I, I think they're a poor fit. You can't even do the retro costumes unless you alter them to the point where they kind of lose the appeal, as they often do. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what Armageddon, Sector, and Deadly Alliance Cyrax look like in this game. I'm also curious about whether the Cyber Initiative is fully cyborgs or if it is just armor. Of course, whether they actually still have free will. Because, you know, these are the hallmarks of the Cyber Initiative. The horror of the Cyber Initiative is probably not here. And then there will be people who will look at that and go, oh, I see. So because they're women now, we can't have them be brainwashed. We can't have them lose their um, free will and become just machines. Or oh, they could do that with the male versions, even in Onslaught, you know. There could be some validities to that argument, I'll be real. I mean, we've seen this before where, you know, the one member of the Justice League not controlled in Suicide Squad was Wonder Woman. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> anyway, finally resuming the trailer. So he's... Well, we know straight away... He's... So we know straight away that, that he's going to be killing that other Sub-Zero. Which raises the question then, what are the alliances here? Is that he subservient to Havoc or is he just a rogue agent? Like he's just been infected and he's like, go off and do your thing, chaos. Which would probably be the most chaotic thing Havoc could possibly do at this point. This is cool though, this ruined uh, fire temple. I'm hoping we'll see more variants like this for the story. Maybe make use of one or two of the ones we've already got because I really think rainy version of the tea house that we got would be really good for this, the story. This is the potential for a really good Mesa as well for an invasion. This will be releasing alongside the Liu Kang season. This will be where the Liu Kang season will end, I guarantee it, right? It's going to be because it's a Liu Kang stage and it's an invader. Like, he shows up and just wrecks the, the fire temple. And so we have to go there and, and, and fight him while he's like slaughtering all these monks. And it's like, dude, we just got done with the Havoc season or whatever. It's like, they've all just been killed. That'll be really funny is if this wasn't even from Havoc. This was like, this is a sequel to Invasions. And it's like, dude, we, we, we these guys just got white. This isn't the Hayabusa village. No, you can't just kill these guys again. <laughs> but yeah, we get the Scorpion noob cybot fight which is a little different from scorpion sub-zero but it's the same characters <laughs> uh. first shang Tsung, now this okay so looking at those colors on his chest that's significant i'm i'm, I'm guessing this is like a, a take on the kami dogu because they are all kind of defined by a particular colors not necessarily these colors but and you know the six of them and you know you bring about havoc he's uh, from deception it makes sense to have all these callbacks to Deception, not just to MK9 with Noob Cybot's dialogue. And from the sounds of it, Katana's going to be getting a big role because she's the one talking about Havix. So the dialogue to me doesn't suggest she's from Havix timeline. I think there's going to be our Katana getting a bigger role, possibly in response to fans criticizing the fact that she had very little to do in the main story. She's probably going to get her own story chapter here, especially with the other characters here being villains. This is what's different from Aftermath is Aftermath was about introducing the characters who... We're going to be getting roles in the story, and the story they're focused on the DLC characters, Nightwolf, Shiva, Shang Tsung, you know. This one, it's very unlikely we're going to be getting chapters for Sector, Cyrax, and Noob Cybot. I think Noob's just going to be an antagonist. Sector and Cyrax will probably play as one of them. Maybe Sector, just for, just for the gimmick, gimmick of playing as Sector in a story mode, because we've never done that before. I doubt it'll be both, because that would be taking the piss, I think. So I think they're going to use this opportunity to put characters who didn't get much to do in the spotlight, with Katana being a key example of that. Who will use for the finale remains to be seen. And I wonder if this is what Havoc's going to be for his final fight. Like, this is what the true final fight of Titan Havoc is going to be, wearing this. The environment looks really cool. I, I like this chaos place. It could be Chaos Realm from either timeline it might just be uh, ruins it might be hell maybe havoc doesn't even have realms anymore maybe this is just like what remains of everything he's been merging together you know like the build up to the one being which is probably what they're going to set up here imagine havoc's going to like channel the one being from his timeline in some like big abstract thing and i hope they don't but i can see that happening because you know i i, I didn't expect the legends film to do that and you know here we are it's havoc this would be amusing. Alright, so he's, he's, so he should have been outworld and beats the shit out of the good guys. 
Master. Will the threats from these titans never cease? Or is that Melina? Sounds a, a little uh, rough. Not not in like not in like a an unfinished way, but like in terms of her voice, she doesn't. She sounds like she's it's somewhere in between the human Melina and the uh, ah, I'm, I am gameplay Melina. Uh, yeah, I did I did notice there was someone dressed as a soldier. So maybe Sector and Cyrax are going to be good guys here, trying to save Noob Cybot. And yeah, there's Johnny dressed like a, a World War Two soldier. Is he just off the set of play off one of his films? Uh, is this more material for one of my upcoming videos? Not soon upcoming like next year or is it a johnny cage who who is like a soldier from world war ii in an alternate timeline that could be funny but yeah so these are, are just normal people from the looks of it they're just wearing wearing iron man armor and i like the designs like they are good it's, it's just i feel like the whole gender swap thing was it was and doing it to both of them like do you not think it would have been would have been wiser to just have one of them stay the same like why gender swap both why not just keep one the same Right, I have one of them stay as a man, one as a woman. So you have the, a more of a visual distinction between the two. Oh, it's just silly. But th the designs are good. The gameplay looks all right. It'll be fun to see how many top eights will end up being Cyrax and Cyrax. <laughs> <laughs> Something else I wanted to comment on, but I forget. Havoc Gear has been kicked in by new Cybots. Is Havoc not going to be using the Fusion Fighters? Is he just going to be using the, the, the Season of Chaos characters? But I wonder if this is the reason why they use those Havoc skins in for Melina, because they were like, we need to get these in for the so we can have them in the story mode. Even though there are other ways they could have done it. They could have just, instead of having Liu Kang be the, the antagonist for the, the, the next season, they could have had it be a Havoc thing. Just another Havoc invading at the same time. Or make that invasion season be like set after the story and this is the remnants of Havoc's army and then you have someone else at the end who is just there as like Havoc's top lieutenant or something. Maybe just have Noob Cybot at the end as the, the boss. Like he's taking over the remnants. Yeah, so I have changed my theory a bit that we will be playing as Sector or Sarek and it is, Sector kind of looks like Lee Mei. Then again, so does Sindel. I mean, we already got Noob Cybot who is Sub-Zero. So I, I, I hesitate, I shudder at the idea that Sector could somehow be connected to Lee Mei, which could explain why this sounds somewhat similar. It could be that they have very similar f uh, looking face models for the characters. Tell me, how do we escape this crisis? Yeah, we get it, Scorpion's and Noob. It disgusts me. Oh, you... <gasps> Yo! So I was curious about this. Will there be shit I do uniforms introduced for scorpion a smoke and screw to throw him in for sub-zero and the others too at takeda you'll have to get one he's gonna get a story chapter for sure okay uh, <laughs> so i just had a, a, a realization yeah so they're getting these uniforms that's good will we get them straight away or are they gonna lock them away behind uh, the seasonal towers if they do the latter the nether realm genuinely are a bad company that doesn't care about their fans because that is that is disgusting but i fully expect them to do that but realize, Scorpion fighting Noob Cybot, they put a lot of focus on that. They didn't just show a shot of it. It's just, it I don't think it's going to be just a cutscene fight. And I'm doubtful it's going to be him fighting and then losing. And then Taka is like, you're not going to de defeat Sub-Zero. Well, quite the anger mean. So the question is, are we getting a Scorpion chapter? If this is the Scorpion chapter where he's going to fight Cyrax, more likely we're going to be playing the Cyrax for it. He wouldn't be able to fight Noob. But the point is, if he's fighting Noob, is he going to get his own chapter again? Or are we going to fight as Noob? A Noob Cybot chapter would be fight Scorpion. That could be interesting. I know Scorpion won't die because, well, it's Scorpion. But that's interesting to think that Noob Cybot could get a chapter where he fights the Chaos Sub-Zero and also fights the main Scorpion. Probably Sector and or Cyrax. That's interesting. Maybe Netherrealm thought, you know, it worked out real well for Kuala Liang when he had two chapters in one story, so maybe we should do the same. Oh, you've corrupted the Lin Kuei. Make no mistake, we are here because of your treachery. Yeah, so, so Takeda and Noob. So I guess Noob is going to be fighting uh, Takeda and Scorpion. And the scene Sector and Cyrax fight make, makes me worry we're going to go down the same route as everything. Sub-Zero's been ousted from the Link Way because he's become Noob Cybot. Sector's going to fly for control, be like, fuck Behan, he's a lost cause, but we should, I'll, I'll take over. And Cyrax is like, no, we're not going to do that. Which will all lead to Cyrax either joining the Special Forces or she will just go and join the shared I do and then it's like well the Linkway is now just down to Sector and it's going to become the Cyber Linkway and we'll be done with the Linkway immediately. Any new stuff has to be gone. Now we couldn't have the war in Linkway and shared I do as, a, as an actual thing because we never had that before. It's, it's just been the shared I do is dead and then in the next timeline they're a force for good alongside the Linkway and they work together. But no, no, now it seems like we're just going to turn the shared I do into the Sub-Zero Linkway and then we have the Link Linkway become the Cyber Linkway and that's it. That's the, the scorpion. There 
will be blood. Yeah, of course there'll be blood. This is a small thing. It's not a, it's not a big thing, but I, I wish the logo was a bit more chaotic. You know, we have Mortal 1 Combat, Chaos 1 Reigns. Instead of having it be, be split like that, I mean, maybe the idea is showing off the, the, the timelines, or if that was the idea, I'm sure it should have been Mortal Kombat 1 Chaos Reigns. To have Mortal Kombat represent our timeline and Chaos Reigns represent Havocs, but I think it should be a bit more chaotic because it's about chaos. This is the title. <laughs> also, small thing, uh, spelling it with a K just reminds me of the villain of Skylanders. Do you like scary movies? Yeah, his ghost face. The other character I, was, I knew about. T-1000? Okay, that, that that was... He and Ghostface were rumoured for a long time. Remember there were rumours that he was going to be the Terminator again, along with Conan the Barbarian? Or maybe that's, that's what this is. It's T-1000 and Conan. Is that going to be the reveal? We have Arnie as Conan, and then he's going to have intros where he's like, uh, chill out, dickwad. <laughs> and it's like, did Johnny Cage teach you that? <laughs> Some... Dumb crap. Yep, Conan. I'm not gonna lie, this combat pack is fucking terrible. An alternate version of catch we've already got, it may as well have been fucking Cyber Sub-Zero. Sectorians and Cyrax together. That's that's lame. The mask looks like something I would see in a fucking true underdog uh, thumbnail, some AI generated crap. That is just meant to convey the idea. Looking at them two now, it's like the designs are way too similar. The shoulders are a bit different. It looks like there's maybe some arm blades or... No, that, that's that's the flamethrower jets on Sector. I know that's kind of what they were doing with the Lin Kuei generally. Where they were going for a, a uniform design, a literal uniform. But if you're going to sell these two characters, they really should have more distinct designs. You know, th this is just lame. Oh, wait, no, the, the chest is, is like a bit more like a uh, scaled armor on, on Sector. It's totally different. I s absolutely think that they should have just had a Triborg as a character in this. It would have been a, a better fit just so they can have more variety. Ghostface is fine. I'm sure we'll get the mask from the from the show. But then again, this is Netherrealm. So, you know, you never know what, if they'll do the obvious thing people would want. I'm sure his alternate palettes will be terrible. Just like, here's a red robe and a brown one. If they don't do a purple robe like, like the Shadow Priests, then they have no idea what they're doing. I'm sorry. And then you have those two over there who just look look, look really uncanny. They look like deep fakes. It's weird. Maybe we've not heard the characters talk because they don't know if they'll be able to get Arnie in this time. If they don't get Arnie in, please don't get Chris Cox in because he, he's a fine actor, but he was, he's, his Arnie impression is just awful. Hopefully they'll be able to do better this time, whether it is Arnie or not. It's really interesting having Conan though. Like, See, Terminator was there partly because he had a new movie to promote. And Conan has been rebooted since. And, like, no, no one cared then. And that was, like, a decade ago. So I can't imagine there is a reason to have Conan unless they do have Arnie doing the voice. But I'm not willing to put money down on that. I think with Ghostface, it is the voice. I'm not as familiar. I think it's Roger Jackson. He was actually a voice actor. You, you hear him in stuff. He was in, like, DOA 2 as Genfu, I'm pretty sure. He's Mojo Jojo as well. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. It, it, it remains to be seen if... It, if I just had his name in my head and, I'll, it, and I'm blanking. Something Patrick, I think, as T-1000. We'll see. But yeah, this is just a terrible selection. 24th of September. So it's roughly a year later. I'm not sure if that was the exact date, which would be cool. It was like, yeah, here's the exact date. I, mean, I guess it would fit for Netherrealm to be like, here's the chaos thing. It's going to be exactly a year. This should be like a day off, right? It should be like one day shy or one day over being a year later just to be a little, a little quirky. <laughs> Animality's coming back. Is weird animality. But how seamless is it going to be? A hippo? A gorilla? A, a t skeleton t -rex. Okay, we're not scorpions is. I saw that wolf with a spirit wolf. Oh, that's Kenji! That's Kenshi. I was going to say, it's like, are they implying Night, uh, Night Wolf is going to help out? No, that's Kenshi. Okay, so this could be a uh, fun for the theorists. H who has what fatalities? It would be funny if Scorpion didn't have it, because you remember originally in MK3, Scorpion wasn't in the game, so Shiva was a Scorpion. As a result of that, Scorpion became uh, a penguin that laid exploding eggs. I wonder if perhaps the... Uh the gorilla could be a nod to the man himself, Reptile, who became a chimp back in the day. And now he, he'll probably be some kind of big lizard thing, maybe like a crocodile, doing the death roll stuff. A hedgehog? No, it's a fucking fish. Rain. Rain's the fish. A puff. A, a, a mantis? You, okay, the effect is good, because that was the thing I was, I was concerned about. 
The actual transformation effects back in the day were sprites. So all they had to do is, here's the actor, here's the animal sprite, let's animorphs this, right? A few sprites going between. When Scorpion became a scorpion in MK4, it was just a big fire effect, which is how morphs were often done. Like back in Shaolin Monks, when Shang Tsung would morph, a big green effect would surround him and then his character model is swapped out. They actually did that, I think, up until MK9, which is one of the reasons why uh, transformation stuff became way less common because the effect is, is terrible. Then they had a really good effect since MK11, but that's just still uh, like two models, I'm pretty sure, overlaid on of each other then one kind of like is removed by an effect which i think is how they would they do um skeletons and stuff like that this one though it's actually a really good effect like it's you know it is partly like covered by the 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 bright glow effects and whatnot but there, there is clearly a transformation to it that's really good I felt, I felt that was one of the things that held back animalities from ever coming back was right after it there was a jump to 3d and they were like oh th this effect just does not work <laughs> but th this is great I like this a lot. So theories get working out. Yeah, that's something that fits Melina. So yeah, I'm, look I'm looking forward to seeing. That's a good logo. Okay, okay. So Sarek sets on Noob Cyber are on release. That's interesting. <laughs> the Liu Kang looks like a fucking uh, Photoshop. The face looks exactly the same as it does in that. Cause it always looks wonky. The actual version of, of the, the cover that like you see in the, in the original trailer looks way better, but the version on the cover looks look proper jank. And now looking at this, it's like, it looks like they took that exact face and just like sh like shifted his, his body or like put that he uh, head on a different, <laughs> different model. It's weird. Separate combat pack two character bundle not available. So yeah, so that's just part of the expansion. You, you can't get them separately. Okay. But so these characters are available on release. So. It's time to theorize how long this is going to be. The main campaign is longer than usual, but I think that's just because of the, they were doing so much in it. I, whether this campaign will be longer than Aftermath, I don't know. It's not just built on the existing story. It's a, it's a separate story. Now, this is a sequel narrative. It's not um, going back into the same events and we can still use all the same characters and whatnot. I am hoping that everyone who shows up will get a new outfit. Again, it's not just going back into those same events where everyone wearing the same clothes makes sense. I want everyone to have a different outfit, although I'm pretty sure Scorpion was back in his uh, old Lin Kuei uniform during the Noob Cybot fight, which I can check. Yeah, so I, I, I think he's just going to be using the Lin Kuei uniform again. Well, there's, that's, that's main gear has also been captured. This will be interesting to see uh, if he'll be captured just, just hanging out at the fire garden or if he'll be captured as part of the ending. Because I'm working on a video right now about the timeline of all the endings and, and uh, invasions. And Gear Ascending doesn't seem to take place until after the Shang Tsung season. Is this going to lead into him going off to be the, the guardian outside of time? There are some interesting things going on here, stuff I didn't expect to happen. I, I did not expect them to have that, that Johnny Cage outfit. I didn't expect... I, I'm cautiously optimistic because M M1K did have good writing. The, the, the stuff in the last chapter was a bit of a mess and felt rather rushed. I'm in interested to see how many main, main characters will die. I, I mean, playable characters will die rather because there wasn't much in the way of actual deaths for main characters uh, from our timeline in the... I'm just distracting myself. <laughs> there wasn't much in the way of deaths of, of main timeline characters in the main story with Sindel being the only one, I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm a pretty sure that was the only one. Um, so I'm curious to see if anyone will die. Anyone else? Yep, he's, he is just in the Lin Kuei uniform. In fairness, this could just be... Uh, I just had another thought. Uh, this could just be a case of him putting on the Lin Kuei uniform to fight his brother and say, this is what we used to represent. That's a possibility. I hope the other one isn't just his casual clothes and this is what the, the Shira Ryu was just doing. Which I know that was originally how it was. Like the Shira Ryu uniform was, was still the Lin Kuei one, but like as a, like a mockery. I, I, I don't want them to do that though. I mean, I, I was going to say, you can imagine the Warring Clans having the exact same uniform, but I guess it won't be because the, it's going to be the Cyber Lin Kuei versus the Shira Ryu who are keeping the Lin Kuei legacy alive. Yeah, and like Kung Lao and Raiden were in the same clothes, so I guess we're not getting new outfits other than something specific like his Scorpion in his casual clothes. You know, in MK11, Hanzo was just at the fire garden in his armor. He had his, he had his armor on, you know, he didn't have an armored down version like the Jackie and Cassie had. Other than stuff like that, we're not going to get new clothes. And Johnny, but he's probably just going to come off one of his film sets. Which is actually interesting in and of itself that he's not just making a Mortal Kombat movie. Because that was what his ending set up. Who knows, maybe that's going to come after this. Because the characters are not going to get arcade endings. The only arcade endings are going to be Sector, Cyrax, and Noob Cybot. Unless they do something wild and give other characters new arcade endings, like a new arcade run that has uh, Havoc as the boss. And say, like, well, here's what the characters are up to after that. Which I, I highly doubt, as cool as that would be. So I think... 
we are just going to have to look to those three endings and then other ones that come out not attached to a story pack after that. Uh, it, is, it is worth looking at the fact that the guests are all going to release after the expansion while the other characters release with it, which suggests that the next combat pack, if there is one, will be starting up probably in the middle of next year. We're probably looking at like two months between each new character. So it'll probably be September to November to January to March. And that'll be around the time we'll probably hear news about whatever comes next. And unless we go four months between characters, which, you know, people would... Oh, it'll be three months. Well, it'll be three months. But then people would call it a dead game. And they'll be right to do so, I guess. So it's a question of, will Warner Bros. allow them to keep adding on to this game? Or is this going to be it? Who knows? I hope we get to see some some alternate costumes show up in the background. That'd be cool. I'm sure we'll see uh, Deception Havoc released al alongside the expansion just so that he can, you know, because they'll probably have a, a design. For, they have the helmet in, in the cutscene. We saw that early on. So they'll probably have Havoc Deception costume released alongside that, the default design, which is a shame. I would have preferred them to do the hooded design, you know, just because that was a solid outfit. And yeah, that, that'll probably what it'll be. It'll probably be, here's some retro costumes to go alongside the, the expansion. And they are Deception Havoc and Noob Cybot, Deadly Alliance Cyrax, Dece and, uh, Deception Armageddon Sector. And that'll be the costumes we'll get. No word on cameos, interestingly. Ed Boon did do a poll about cameos, so I'm sure there, there will be some more. It would be rather telling if they didn't do any more cameos <laughs> and it was just the characters. I mean, maybe that'll be how they'll stretch things out. Oh, Chaos Reigns Bundle. Okay. M maybe that'll be how they'll, they'll stretch things out is, well, we'll have a, a cameo every other month in between the characters still. Probably five of them or maybe six just to keep the menu looking uh, nice and neat. Because uh, I like it when things are even. Although then again, Chaos Season, maybe it'll change. Will it change the main menu? Who knows? I mean, they did it for MK11. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what it's going to be. Some cameos. Probably some characters we saw there. Otaru has to show up somewhere and then be a cameo, right? That, that has to be a thing. But yeah, that, that is my prediction. We'll get these three characters. Oh, yeah, actually, it wouldn't be... With these three characters, with a cameo in between each of those releases, so maybe it'll just be three cameos. If they don't do cameos, I'll be telling that the, the, the system is a failure, because I know a lot of people don't like it. So they have to support it. But Ed Boon did recently put a tweet about what people want to see more of from cameos, whether it's moves, characters. There was something else uh, that was on there. But yeah, I, th I think we are going to get uh, a bunch more cameos. I reckon at least one will be someone who's already on the playable roster. I think it'd be good to have Raiden or Liu Kang, you know, God Raiden, who we've already got the assets for, or probably what they will do, or they could have mortal Liu Kang with like the classic bicycle kick and stuff like that. But I'm sure it'll be Raiden, probably Hotaru, just to see if it makes sense. Then a Netherrealm era character, you know, one of the combat kids probably, like like probably Kung Jin, or maybe Cassie. Um, there, there have been leaks of like Cassie supposedly being in the game. I imagine those were just like fake. Because I can't imagine, like, they had assets of Cassian during the first year of content. If she's not going to be in this, you know, for, like, pre-fight intros. So I, I could see Cassie or Jackie making the uh, cameo roster and leaving Jin for the playable roster. Although, then again, maybe Cassie was meant to be on in Season 1, but she has to be pushed out f to make room for Ermac. And then, like, well, we can't put her in this because this is the one for the story. I'm going to have three guest characters. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing I'm most looking forward to with this, I would say, because I am cautiously optimistic, again, because the, the, the writing in M1K is a marked improvement of what we had, especially in MK11. Dominic Chanchola has definitely improved as a as a character writer. Uh, the character stuff is the best part of that, you know, Johnny and Kenshi and whatnot. There's some really good stuff there. I'm, ho I'm hoping for more like, alternate versions of existing stages than just the, f the Fire Temple. Hopefully we'll get a Shir Ryu base location, although I think Sector uh, was confronting Scorpion, or was it Cyrax? Confronting Scorpion in the Fire Temple, so probably not. Maybe that's their base, we don't actually know. I mean, they were just hanging out there, so that probably is what their base operations is. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about the writing. I'm looking forward to seeing what, what they announce for cameos. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll an an announce it around the time of the release. You know, there'll probably be another trailer that'll show off. Here's some cameos. It is interesting how they've not announced any cameos for this, though, as part of the pack. There's no way they're not doing cameos, unless the cameos are going to be, like, a free thing from now on, which, highly unlikely. You know, Warner Bros. likes to monetize everything. I've never seen any of the Scream films. Ghostface, for me, is the scary movie character. So, ho hope he, like, fumbles over and, like, fucks up and... I'd love to see a reference to Shriek if you know what I did last Friday the 13th, where Ghostface just can't kill any named characters. He like tries to kill a character, then like fumbles his way into them dying, but like, him doing it, he's like, oh. <laughs> they, they won't, though. I've seen one of the Conan films, I forget. I've, 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 I think I've seen both, actually. Don't really care for them, to be honest. T-1000, you know, from a, a classic movie. This kind of goes into something I've said on the Combat Kings, that I feel like they're kind of running out of ideas uh, for these iconic characters. 
because they've gone through most of the horror icons. All that's really left is like Pinhead and I, I, I guess Ghostface. And then here's the action ones. We've got Conan, who is almost even that gory. Like, yeah, I, I think he decapitated James Earl Jones, but it wasn't gory. His alternate colors are going to be the worst. <laughs> he says a different colored uh, loincloth. T-1000, yeah, fine, I guess. But the villain from a, from a film series we've already had a representative of, that, that's kind of lame. Once, once you repeat, it's borderline repeating guests at this point. So I think they've run out of ideas. Maybe they should Maybe they should have less guest characters so they'll have more ideas and they won't have to keep relying on these weird picks that a, a lot of the current player base is too young to have seen and uh, characters who are from like current streaming series that won't be talked about in like five years. But I think the thing I'm most looking forward to about this is when someone makes a like two minute video of all the Conan T-1000 intros or all the Terminator references and intros that feature Conan and they just make a video that's just those and gets like half a million views. Uh, whereas people who actually put effort into making actual content struggle to get like a fifth of that because that's the current state of MK content and I don't want to be here anymore. I wanted to end on that joke, but I, I realised I would end things off on a negative note, and I am somewhat optimistic, despite all my gripes. There's always going to be gripes, because it's Netherrealm. <laughs> Sector and Cyrax needed more distinct designs. They shouldn't have both been in it. It should have just been Triborg to match. I I'm not going to go over this again. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> I just know it. I just know it, because that's what Netherrealm do. They, they, they disappoint. Just to close off, actually, I'm just going to... <laughs> I was just about to close off by talking about here's the characters I'm going to pair these characters with for cameos that's what I do I try to match everyone up you know Team 1000 is going to have Striker because cops I'm going to put Sector and Cyrax with themselves Noob is going to be with Sub-Zero Ghostface probably Kano because they didn't know the whole knife thing and then Conan uh, that's a tough one uh, big dude with sword it could uh, maybe go or I don't know uh, I'd have to, I have to look back on what is in Conan, but then I remembered there's something I forgot to comment on because there's a point where I was about to say something and I was like, oh, well, I, I just thought of something. But then I carried on with the original thought. We've not seen Smoke. We've seen Scorpion. We've not seen Smoke. I don't think Smoke is going to die. I think Smoke's going to become a cyborg. I think that's going to be a thing. He'll become Cyber Smoke. I mean, my original thought was we'll probably get Cyber uh, Smoke and Sub-Zero costumes, but I think Cyber Smoke's going to become a cyborg. Not necessarily to the extent he used to be, although I could see that happening. Just because Sector and Cyrax here seem a bit more... Well, Cyrax is going to be more honourable, so I, I doubt she would take part in Smoke being turned into a cyborg. But I think he's going to get fucked up by these two. I, I think I think it's going to be... There's going to be them attacking the Fire Temple in, like, Chapter 2. Maybe we'll get a Havoc chapter to, to kick things off where he's, he's like beating up uh, Bihan. Or maybe that'll just be the opening scene where he's being brought in. But fighting Geras in the story would be good. The point is, I think Smoke is going to be fought by Cyrax or Noob Cyborg. Maybe that, that'll be how Noob Cyborg enters the scene. He comes in and like rips Smoke's legs off, right? And so he needs to become a cyborg. This is why um, Sector is like, Bihan's a lost cause. And Cyrax is like having, having this crisis about, should we still be doing this? You know, something like that. I, I can see that being a, a big catalyst that Smoke gets majorly fucked up. I, I don't think he's going to die though. I think that will be a bit much. I think he's going to become a, become a cyborg, but like not as an evil brainwashed cyborg, just he has the cyber legs and then he has like the armor to protect him. And that'll be the extent of it. And we'll get a costume that'll basically be the male equivalent of Sector and Cyrax's designs. And that'll be the story costume that will be released alongside it or a little down the line. I'll still assume that they continue as they have been. The content has largely slowed down in terms of the, the story costumes. Still, we even have all the story costumes, so they probably held off on a bunch of those so we, we can get the, the stealth suits in this expansion. I'm sure the story costumes we'll get right away will be maybe Titan Havoc. I could see that being one just because that's the big thing alongside Cyber Smoke or Johnny. I reckon that's what it'll be. Okay, now I'm done. <laughs>